All right, what up, y'all? It's Eric Spivak once again with Blockster Media, and we are here once again in Dubai for another year. And at Token 2049, where we're exploring the future of innovation. And right now we have Chris from Apex Futures, and looking forward to having this conversation because there's an opportunity of a lifetime for the builders and developers and coders and programmers and people that really want to shape the future of things. So. I'd love for you to uh, basically introduce yourself and give people um, kind of like an overview of what you guys do and why it matters. And maybe just a little background of definitely. how you got to where you are. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. So I'm Christopher Greenwood, and uh, my background is I was one of the, the core members that launched Cardano. So from that side of things, no deal, right? <laughs> that was my experience, and it's I took major. a bit of time out of crypto. And then um, what we started to realize actually when we were watching it as a team is that the industry is quite fragmented and very tribal. So yeah. these guys like these guys, these guys don't like them. Right. But when you boil it down to the tech, it's fantastic. But when it's used for its right purpose. So we came up with this idea, which is both technical and social, mm -hmm. which is why don't we bring together the technology and the people. So this is really a merger of UTXO and EVM. Blockchain, Ethereum, yep. Cardano, Ethereum, however you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking the technology, so there's nothing fancy actually. So this won't, we, we can't sort yeah. of say that, but some technology can be used in a certain way and achieve a certain result. Yep. And then you can organize it in a different way and achieve a different result. So that's essentially what we're doing. Yeah. No, I, I like to use the example for people that, um, you know, especially when the narrative for crypto was a lot worse, I think it's gotten a bit better, a little refined, a little more adopted and acceptable. Yeah. Um, even though if I offer a kid $50 in cash or $50 in crypto, he's taking the cash or course, she's taking the cash. Course. But I used to say, you know, you could put a hammer at someone's doorstep and they could use it to build or they could use it to destroy. Yeah. And I choose to uh, congregate and communicate and connect with curators and cultivators and creators and people yeah. that are, are building. And I think you're kind of democratizing the opportunity to do that. And that's, that's powerful. Um, and the fact that you're bridging, it sounds like Ethereum and Bitcoin and Cardano and yeah. others, right? Um, what was the process like to get people to A, understand that that's even a thing? Yeah. Because you have maxis for each one. Yeah, you have fully, people yeah. that are so gung-ho and like, EVM only, Ethereum only, yeah, yeah. nothing else matters, right? Yeah, yeah. But each chain and each, um, E each ecosystem has its own benefits and perks like you just said so yeah. what what's been the easiest way for people to understand that you're kind of like open sourcing it in a way yeah. for builders and community yeah, creators yeah. to come together like yeah. my, the major, when we speak to people we always have to speak on the, a level that they'll understand right so for many people that are in this space it makes sense yeah. so for example when you speak to people from the UTXO side this model which you know, just to explain it simply, is good for its security, also good for its scalability, and also good for the purpose of decentralizing a network. But does it have a developer base to be able to code the next apps, the next applications? Questionable. Right. But you take something like uh, Ethereum, yeah. massive developer community, huge. Yeah. And uh, that social capital is like huge. So the, what we're looking at here is, you look at what the technology is good for, you look at what the needs are, within the industry to actually get adoption. So yeah. for many people, this won't even need to be a, a, a concern, right? You, you don't know all the details about what's behind your phone and how that works. You just care about what the application's doing. Right. So in that way, from the ground up, we're bringing together the tech communities, the people who understand this, the people who want to actually build something useful and actually don't want to be bothered by the noise of the tribalistic attitudes, the drama that exists in some communities. Right. So it'll unlock basically more innovation, is what we believe, and that's why right. we're doing it. Yeah, no, I, I can see the opportunity to basically avoid a lot of the noise and static that exists yeah. on these other platforms, because it's very, very aggressive, high-powered, yeah, 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 yeah. loud, yeah, 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 yeah. fast, big money moving around. And it distracts you from the real thing. And I, and I think, like, you know, I'm in the space, I've been in crypto, blockchain, etc. since 2016, I'm using this technology to fix and solve or resolve some socioeconomic and geopolitical issues. So when I say that big lofty statement, uh, people are like, what do you mean? 
And I'm like, yeah, I'm literally, I understand different methods of utilizing this tooling to solve some huge problems in the world that can't be addressed otherwise. And you can't even throw a stone at solving without this technology. And I think for builders like me, uh, I would, I'd, I'd appreciate and value uh, a place where I don't have to go through such bureaucracy to access support. And I think you guys are creating, or not think, I know you guys are creating that, I guess, um, room, that yeah. space. If you build it, they will come, right? But if you give them the tools that helped you become successful, then ideally they're building new tools and giving those to other people, which then creates a trickle effect. And I think that mixed with the opportunity tied to hackathons and really accelerating um, innovation, that's that's a beautiful thing. I, I don't think I've heard of too many people doing that, other than maybe like accelerators that are tied to Solana yeah, yeah. or um, incubator programs or Y Combinator, Techstars type stuff. But with all that said, um, I guess, how do people discover the network? How do people find out about where you guys are building and congregating and sharing and showing work? Yeah. And then what kind of resources are available in that region too? Got you, got you. Well, it's what you were saying there, right? How do you create an ecosystem that's going to support development, enable people to build and actually solve problems? Uh, because we're a tri-chain architecture, we've got UTXO, we have Ethereum, uh, and also a more performant UTXO based. We've got different communities and different camps. So first of all, we started by launching our prime layer one, uh, which we have proof of stake, liquid native staking at 10%. That has a specific niche community of stake pool operators who are running the nodes, they're getting the rewards, people who are early adopters, they understand the vision, they got the token, then they stake, they're earning their rewards now. So for that community, it's clear. Yep. Next, now once we launch the EVM chain, this is when we bring on mainly the larger development community. And how we've done that actually is, uh, we kept ourselves super lean from the foundation. We're registered in Switzerland, Apex Fusion Foundation. Yep. And uh, we went through great lengths to become Mika compliant. Yep. So actually wow. we're classified as a utility token for this. So what we're doing is actually partnering with more development teams right. and organizations like Eternal Tech, Rav3, they've been in the yep. EPM space for a long time. Yep. So our extended dev community is in the hundreds now. That's amazing. And how we bring them on board is we've been able to tune the foundation's contribution to them, I can say, through grants, through infusion programs, so that we have a good solid group of technical minds yep. that's made a clear roadmap. Yep. And based on that roadmap, if someone says, well, I can do this for you, then we, okay, within a short decision time, we, we, we infuse them and they get going. Right. Okay. So how are people getting involved? At the moment, it's a lot through personal connections mouth, and networks. Yeah. The CEO of our um, foundation is Ivan Belayas. He's a superstar in the EVM space. He's uh, one of the vice presidents at Tenderly, largest uh, sort of um, tooling uh, yep. infrastructure space in the, in the space. So like that now, it's sort of grassroots, networks, yeah. connections, bringing good people together. And then um, once we've put all the right tooling in place, we'll be doing a bigger push. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. That makes sense. I hope that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's clear. It's very, it's organic community building um, with a dangling carrot of, you know, if you build really cool shit, we'll support it. See, we have to go step by step. Yeah. See, one of the things which is interesting for the guys from the Ethereum space is that uh, you have a non-competing layer one. So yeah. the layer one is purely just for settlement right. and for having the, the security of the token, which right. you then pull across and you, you do all of your, all, all of your work. Your things, yeah. So that's super interesting. But in order for that to be uh, have longevity, you have to stabilize that foundation really good. Yeah. So that's through staking, through people having the token, leaving it, getting their rewards, and then from that you can build on top step by step. Yeah, no, I mean, it all makes sense. And I, I could see the uh, benefits for creators and developers, coders, programmers, etc. cetera, um, if you bring maybe like one challenge and everybody's gonna go and do their solo projects or their group projects and try to solve that. Yeah. But if they're consistently doing that, utilizing what you guys have built and you're all part of the same network, yeah. it just sounds like a really cool league or team yeah. that is, you know, yeah. the, the goal is like, let's solve problems, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think at the end of the day, like a lot of us really want to do that at a first place like yeah. we we like the challenge and that's why we do it and that's why like I think even crypto not being mass adopted 
is a huge challenge that I struggle with because I love this. You know, I play with it on a regular basis in different ways, and I see the potential that it has, especially in third world countries. But you know, um, globally, it's it's a phenomenon that really just requires people like you creating things like what you have, and people like me educating people on these things in a way that's digestible, inclusive, localized, and native. Yeah. Um, and it needs to be in the layman's terms as well, but to provide basically like the map, you guys are creating the monopoly board and letting people build on top of it. Yeah. Um, there's not enough places like that. So I think that's really unique and special and valuable. And, it, and also one of the key challenges now in the industry, many people know, is liquidity, right? So right. It's, it's mostly locked with in existing projects and right. not much is moving. So most of what I found interesting about this token 2049, and there was even a, a side summit of staking reward summit, it's all about how do we create something that is uh, stable and then can build yield. yield. Right. From an institutional point of view, that's what they're interested in. I want something stable, yeah. and what's the yield on it? They're not so interested in this massive capital appreciation of token value and right. stuff. So we're also taking that because our base is staking. Then we can maybe look at how we wrap that as a product for people, as an instrument, so that that yield-bearing asset can then be used with other DeFi plays right. and bridging to other liquidity providers. So right. probably what it's looking like now is we can become sort of an aggregator, a middle meeting point for how this uh, liquidity moves between chains and ecosystems. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I mean, I think what I see a lot of is like hyper financialization around everything in crypto. Yeah. So much so that you know. When the water's warm, people are in. As yeah, soon yeah. as it's cold, they're out. When yeah, the liquidity yeah. dries up and it's a desert, they're not there. But when it's flourishing, everybody's in. And that creates a lack of sustainability and longevity in products and services. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that you are thinking about that side of it too. And it's like the set it and forget it mentality doesn't really exist so much anymore. It's very much, we're in this, I want it, I want it now, instant grab world. And we're also in a hurry up and wait. You know, we're rushing just yeah, to yeah. stop, rushing just to stop, where I think uh, the idea of staking and interest rates and things of that nature that are slowly accumulating over time based off of your actions or inaction, um, I mean, it leans into the idea of passive income. People want to make money in their sleep. And, you know, a smart investor saves and like hedges their bets and their risks and has things that are multiple revenue streams that can continue to create cash flow, yeah. right? So I, I think your, your head's in the right place. What you guys, or what you all are doing is, is amazing. And I guess, what's the easiest way for people to get started? How do they find you? This is it. Well, I mean, have you got coin market cap? You yeah. have Apex token. Yeah. This is AP. X. Are you shilling it? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Uh, but this no. is on a few exchanges, MEXC. Yeah. Uh, website apexfusion.org is there. And okay. on there we have the devel links to develop for all, all of what we're doing and, and things like that. And uh, obviously on X we can be followed at Apex Fusion. And uh, this is the main places. All right. Apexfusion.org. Is that with a Z or an S? S. Yes. Okay. No, Apex. A a P E X Fusion. Yeah. Yeah. X. I, yeah. yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure because Fusion can be spelled yeah, yeah, with yeah. the master thing. So I want it to be clear and we'll put it on the screen and in the description so nobody gets lost or to a fishing site or anything Thank of that you. nature. But if there's anything else you want to share with the people, now's your time. This is it. I mean, if people want to come to a good project, which yeah. is backed by a good team that have been in the space for some time, that through the benefit of hindsight and seeing how decisions led to certain ways are doing something a bit new, yep. that it could be interesting for the people. I, I like it. I like what I hear. Um, can't wait to actually play around in a sandbox a little bit and roll up my sleeves yeah. and then introduce this to some of these blockchain clubs at schools that I work with that I know for a fact would find this to be a little less intimidating as opposed to all these other, you know, figure it out yeah, type yeah, yeah, yeah. situations. So it seems like a definite like safe alternative option and opportunity for you to have some support and guidance and resources and yeah i love it so appreciate that. i appreciate your time and i look forward to seeing the future thank you Apex. all right thanks very much we're good awesome